Hey Robot Makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So, do you want to learn how to use Python with Arduinos? Arduinos with Python. Can it be done? How do we do it? Let's find out together. Uh, we can read and write pins from other devices and kind of that kind of thing. If you've built an InMove robot, which I have uh, over my shoulder just there, uh, there's something very similar to this. Um, I think it's called MRL, MRL um, comms, which is a uh, my robot lab comms. Anyway. If you want to do that, then this is the show for you. So let's dive straight in. My name is Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. OK, let's get over to our keynote, shall we? OK, and let me know if the audio is OK and everything, people, because uh, I'm using this microphone in a slightly different position. I want to make sure I'm not coming in too hot. So the session goals for today, we're going to learn how we can control an Arduino, uh, whether it's an Arduino uh, Uno, whether it's... Um, a mega, whether it's a nano or whatever, we can control all those different ones. We're going to learn how to do that and use it with Python, which you might not think is possible. It's kind of possible. So we're going to learn about something that's called Fermata or PyFermata, which is the Python version of that. Uh, we're going to learn how we install it. We're going to learn what, what it is, uh, why would you want to choose that, how it works, uh, what it can do for us, and then a bit of a demo as well. So I've got my robot set up over here on my little camera. I've got lots of cameras going on today. So this little guy is a Spars robot, and this Spars robot has a, a little Bluetooth um, connection there. I'm going to plug this into my computer shortly and we're going to move it around as well but with python using an arduino so let's see how we do that okay so what is fermata you might not have heard of this before uh, so on the arduino website they've got lots of documentation about this this isn't a uh, kind of a third party thing this is uh, almost like an industry standard way of communicating with devices so it enables communication with computer apps using a standard serial protocol for all Arduino and Genuino boards. The Fermata library implements the Fermata protocol for communicating with software on your host computer. This allows you to write custom firmware without having to create your own protocol and objects for programming um, the environment that you're using. And it's also based, I didn't realize this until I was doing my a bit of research, it's based on MIDI. So if you've ever used a, a keyboard, an electronic keyboard, and you have used a MIDI, the little connector to connect up to your computer, the, the protocol that it sends messages and it's pretty quick because um, you know you can press keys pretty quickly um, that protocol is very similar uh, Fermata is very based upon that MIDI message format so there are eight bits uh, and the data bytes are seven bits so there's a it's basically an eight bit language uh, that's used to communicate over serial which is great because our serial boards sorry our arduino boards are 8-bit that little chip that's on there the 80 mega chip is an 8-bit chip uh, the thing with python of course is that's a 32-bit language so this enables us to have the best of both worlds program in python and communicate using fermata over serial to our arduino board so how does it work let's have a look at this it's a platform thing so we load fermata onto our arduino the Arduino will look for Fermata commands over the serial port. It'll listen for those 8-bit um, commands coming through the serial. Um, that enables us to connect to the device from another device that's running Python and the PyFermata um, library. We don't have to use Python. We can use any other language. Uh, and what this does is it kind of decouples um, the complexities of the, the device itself that's running our commands with the libraries that we're using to communicate so you don't have to write your own communications protocol and we've had issues like that if i just jump out for a second when i'm writing this um, let me just grab this this is um, going to be my smiles remote so i've got a little pico in there uh, and a bluetooth chip and one of the issues i've got is if i want to you know press a forward command on this i have to write my own protocol for sending that over serial to my robot that's going to listen to that very bespoke language for commands and that means if i make a mistake or i need to update that i have to update it on both halves both the remote control and also on the robot so this formata does away with that it enables us to just use uh, an already standard serial protocol so it means we can connect to our device running Python and this PyFermata library. And then we can read sensor data from the Arduino. We can control motors, servos, LEDs and buzzers and so on in real time from our other device that's running Python and potentially MicroPython. 
So PyFormata is the Python Formata library. Python has a, a library for communicating with the devices using this Formata protocol. It's very easy for us to install. So we just do the pip install PyFormata um, and that will get it installed in our environment. We can then create a board object uh, for the type of board that you want to use. So in this example, on the example that we're going to be looking at shortly, I create an Arduino type of board and then I connect to it. I'm on a Mac, so it's slash dev slash TTY dot USB serial. And it's just dash 110, which is the, the, the serial port that that creates. So if you want to grab a copy of this or read any of the documentation. I'm having trouble hearing you. My watch saying that. If you want to um, head over to pypy.org, you can then search for the Pi Formata and you can read some of the um, documentation that's on there. That's the easiest way to find it. Okay, so if you enjoy these videos, um, please make sure you, you like the video if you're watching live now or watching on playback, whether that's on Facebook or YouTube, it all counts. Uh, drop me a comment as well. Let me know if this could be of useful to yourself. If you're, um, if you're building, say, um, an InMove robot, for example, you could switch, instead of using the uh, My Robot Lab uh, and Java, you could switch to Python and just use this uh, PyFormata instead. And uh, if you've not already done so on the YouTube channel, click the little bell notification thing and select that to all so that you get notified whenever a new video launches. And usually I get a live video every Sunday, which is what you're watching now. And then there is a midweek pre-recorded one as well, usually around Wednesday, Thursday. OK, so let's jump back to the keynote. We're on the keynote. OK, so, and like I said, yes, every Sunday, 7 p.m. ish. Um, when it's meantime, whether it's plus one, if we're in summertime or not, that's usually about the time. OK, so what can we do with uh, Formata? So like I said, we can control the Arduino. We can read and write to pins, whether it's an analog pin or a digital pin or a pulse width modulation pin. We can actually control it over Bluetooth, which is what I would like to do with my Smars robots. And we can connect to Python, which is really awesome. Python means that we can we can do a lot more complicated behaviors in our robots remotely uh, without having to do too much code in, on the Arduino. The Arduino code, essentially, we just load that once and then we forget about it. And then we can concentrate all our efforts in Python. Um, and that means that we can, as I'll show you on the next slide, the development cycle is really, really short because we're not having to compile it, re-upload it to the robot, test it out. We can we can just leave the robot as it is and just use Bluetooth to connect to it from the Python Pyformata library. So yes, why use it? Like I said, this development test fix cycle, the cadence of doing that, how quickly we can do that really reduces down. It simplifies that communication between devices. It's a protocol that already exists, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we can just pull this library from the Arduino um, software library and also from the Python software library via PyPy, via PIP. And we just get these things to play together nicely. We don't have to worry about how all that glues together. So we can focus on writing our Python code, change it without having to recompile or upload to the Arduino robot. We can just uh, let it connect as it always has. And this means it is quicker to develop and test the code out. And we're going to use the exact same code uh, on... We can use the exact same code um, on other devices that, you, that are using Formata without having to change our main code. We maybe just have to change the serial port that we're connecting to or possibly the board type. But they're the only things that we'd have to change there. So if I wanted to change it to a Mega, for example, and have all these extra ports on there, it'd be very easy for us to do that. So how do we actually install Formata on the Arduino itself? So it is in the standard library. So we can go to Manage Libraries. We can search for Formata in that little search box. Uh, and then we can just click on the install button to get us in installing that. So once that's installed, we can then go to one of the example sketches to get ourselves started. So if you go to the in the Ard Arduino IDE, click on examples, firmware, uh, sorry, Formata, standard Formata. So you can see there, examples, Formata, standard Formata. And then that will open up a sketch with all the things that we need to do to uh, upload to our Arduino. So then all that remains to be done is just to click that uh, upload button and away we go. We're, we're, we're ready to rock and roll with Formata from the pipe from the uh, Arduino side. So one of the things I would like to do with it is not have it physically wired up. So excuse me, if I go over to here for, for a second, um, this robot has got a Bluetooth device. But currently it's connected via this uh, serial cable to the USB port. So obviously when it's running on batteries, I actually don't want it to have to have this cable. I want it to use 
the Bluetooth device. And that just means that we need to change a small line of code, um, which is just this line here, 768 in that standard example, um, to be the serial port, the second serial port. So I would just create a new serial port, configure that however I wish, you know, whatever board speed I want that to be. I think they recommend 57600, otherwise you have to change it on the other end as well. Uh, and that's quick enough to do everything that we need. So very easy for us to change it from the standard serial port to a Bluetooth one instead. Okay, demo time. Let's get over to, let me just go to the whole screen for a second. Um, let me bring up the Arduino and let me share my screen. So let's see, if, is this going to work? Here we go. So um, I'm just currently on, um, on a Mac. I've got um, the Arduino IDE open and I'm just going to go to the, the tools menu and the manage libraries. That's the first thing that we need to look at. So I've already got um, Formata installed on here, but this is how we would do it. So we go over to the search box here once it's done loading all the libraries. And then I would just search for Formata like so. And it's going to bring up there Formata. That's the one that we want to install. That's the, the standard one, if you like. Now, there are some um, other versions of it. So Adafruit have done one for their um, Bluetooth Low Energy uh, version, which is on their breakout boards and their Blue Fruit modules. So I think I've got one of those up here. Let's grab that. Uh, oops, I grabbed the wrong one there. So I think that's the Blue Fruit. There it is. So this blue fruit is um, head up to there. Um, it's a circuit playground. So this is a device, a bit like a microbit or a more advanced Raspberry Pi Pico, but with loads of things on there. So it's got uh, LEDs all the way round. It's got these crocodile clip connectors on there as well, and we've also got things like um, Bluetooth. Um, I think it has an accelerometer on there. It has a little microphone speaker and so on and obviously Bluetooth, so we can connect to that via Bluetooth. So that's a blue fruit, just in case you're wondering what that is. Okay, let's get back over to there. We've got configurable Formata, I'm not sure what that is. Formata Express, that's another one which uses a faster board rate. Formata with device features. Again, I'm not really sure what those are. I just go for the standard one for now. So once you've got the standard one installed, if you head up to File, uh, Examples, Formata, oops, and then standard Formata. That will open up a, a new sketch that has everything that we need on it. So all we need to do is just verify that. I'm just going to disconnect one of my cameras. I'm going to plug in the, the robot. So our robot is now flashing away there. If I go to this view here, um, you might be able to see there, there's a little flash on there that shows that this robot is actually active now. So if I just uh, bring this down like so, we can now, um, oh, let me just bring that even further down so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna click the upload button. If I've got everything right, it will then upload Formata to this robot. So it says uploading, dot, dot, dot. Doesn't take very long because it's a really small program. There we go, done uploading. So now if I go over to the serial monitor um, and I just give that machine a bit of a kick, there you go, it says standard formata.ino. So we can now see that that's actually running it. So Ovi's asking a question there. Hi Ovi. He says, is it possible to connect an ESP chip to an Arduino mode controller? Um, that depends on a lot of things. It depends on voltages. Arduinos tend to be five volts. So all the pin outs on them are five volts. If you have an ESP32 uh, or 8266, I think they are 3.3 volts. So. You can't just put a motor controller board like one of these for the SMARs on top of it. I don't think that would work. You might have to put like loads of voltage divider resistors on there. That's the, the quick answer to that one, I think. OK, so we've now got um, that running. Let me just bring this down here. You can see on the serial port there, if I just reboot the device, there's, a, there's the reboot thing going on there. Oh, there's a button there it is if i just press that and it'll just get it to restart you can see there it says standard formata.ino so it's just echoing back to the serial port that it is um, running standard formata okay so that's the arduino side and that's as much as we need to do so let me just head back over to visual studio now so if i get visual studio up and let's 
me see what I want it to do there. So I'm going to load up um, this program. So this one is just called Blink. So what we've got on here in Python, let's just close down that for a second. We've got uh, from Pyphomata import Arduino. So how do we, we, I've jumped the gun a little bit here. Let's see how we actually install um, Pyphomata on this machine. So what I would normally do, um, if I just deactivate this for a second, and what I would normally do is I would say you do Python 3 dash M and then you create a virtual environment. So what this means is we want to use Python 3 because a lot of machines come with Python 2, which is now defunct and gone away. We want it to run the module within this, um, which is called VENV, which is virtual environment. And we want to call the virtual environment that we're going to create VENV. So what that will do is it will create, I mean, I've already got one on here, so it, it will actually do this, I don't think. Oh, there you go, it's already created one. So if I now do source and I do VNV bin and activate, that will activate that virtual environment. So now when I type in pip install pyformata, it will now install pyformata in that virtual environment. I've actually already got that installed, so there's not actually going to be any change there. Uh, but that means we can now use that Pyphomata library within our Python code. So we're going to import the Arduino board. Now we could import some other things. Let's have a see, oops, what we can do at the end of that. We're not using that util, so actually we could get rid of that. But, um, is there a mega? There you go, Ar Arduino mega. If we wanted to use the mega instead of the Arduino, we could use one of these slightly larger ones that have got more pins on it. Again, if you've not seen the difference between those two before, um, the standard Arduino Uno is on top, and then underneath is the Mega, which has a hell of a lot more pins on it. So you've got all these extra pins here, down there, and then across the bottom there. So rather than just the is it 13 or so, 19 or so that are on the standard one. Okay, so that's the, how we import an extra board. I'm just going to take that off because we're not actually using it and we don't need to import anything we don't need. Uh, then we do import time. We're going to use the time. We're going to use the sleep function from time. So that will um, bring that in. And then this is where we define the board that we're going to use. So we say board equals Arduino. That's the class that we're pulling in there. And then we tell it the serial port that we are going to connect to. So let me just see if this um, is actually correct. If I do ls dev and then uh, TTY star, I think. That should list all the TTY devices on my machine. There you go, and it's 110. USB serial dash 110. That's the USB serial that this uh, robot is connected to. Um, so what I'm gonna do, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna comment out all this code for a second, and I'm simply gonna get it to echo back the version number. So if I just do print um, board, dot get formata version so if i just run this code let's see if we get a number back on the uh, the console there um, if, if it's communicating correctly um, we should get that actually i think i just need to put the uh, brackets in there let's try that again it should bring back the version 2.5 something like that so there you go 2 comma 5 so major version 2 sub version 5 uh, that tells us that um, it's working and it's communicating with the the board okay so what we can do now um, this is a very un uninteresting program but it does mean that we can try out some code we're going to say how many times would you like the LED to blink and then we'll read that into um, loop times and then we will say blinking loop times times and then 4x in the range loop times so whatever that number is write 13 high and then sleep for, um, what's that, a fifth of a second, and then write low, which is zero, and then sleep for another fifth of a second. Let's run this, and let's get over to here, and let, I'm gonna press run now. We might actually not be able to see this pin 13 flashing, because it's actually embedded within the, the body. This is a, one of my first Smiles robots, so it, it is a bit, is a bit loose <laughs> right you can actually see that working so let's let's get a oh actually i've not typed in the number there let's just type in uh i don't know 20 
So it's going to blink the LED 20 times. If I go over to that one there, can we see any better on that one? I don't think we can. Um, so it's blinked the LED 20 times anyway. Um, it's pin 13 has that built in LED. Let's make a, a much more interesting program. So I'm going to head over now to um, a different program I've written. I've called this one smiles.py. So we're going to import the exact same things, Pyformata from Arduino, sorry, from Pyformata, import Arduino, import time, I import sleep from time, and then bot, I'm calling this one bot rather than board this time. Um, so Arduino, and then the, the serial port that we're using, we're just going to print that out again, just so that we can see it's working. And then what I'm going to do, I know that the, the board that I'm using on this uh, robot, this um, Funduino board, Fun, Fundumoto board, uh, which is a motor driver board, this has um, standard things built in. So there's a, a, a buzzer there, I think that's on pin four, and then... Is it four or nine? I can't remember which pin it is. Four or nine. There's a buzzer there, and then there is a whole load of motor drivers as well, which is these pins here. And we need two sets. We need one that says the direction and one that says the speed. So this is what this first block of code here does. It says motor A pin is 10, motor B pin is 11, and then the speed pin is 12, and the speed pin for the other motor is 13. And then I've written a couple of blocks of code. One is forward. So it takes in the bot, which is the... Uh, formata board um, that we are connecting to and then it says bot.digital and then it needs a pin that it's going to connect to so motor a pin which is pin 10 it then writes a one to that um, motor motor b pin it writes one to that so both of them are set high and then the speed for both of these one is set to high one is set to low and that means that the the direction that this uh, robot is going to turn in will work the way we expect now, one of the interesting things here is we don't say sleep, we say past time. And past time, it says there in a little uh, code hint, is a non-blocking timeout for T seconds. So I'm saying basically just wait for one second, but with non-blocking code. So it doesn't block anything else that might be running in the background. Um, then we do the, the opposite of that. So we just switch off the motors. Um, we don't actually have to do those two reverse back, but um, that will make the robot go forward. So the exact opposite of that, so where I've done right, um, right one, right one, one and zero, it's right one, right one, zero and one. So the opposite direction makes the robot go backwards. Then turn left um, is both ones for the motor speed and turn right is both zero for the motor speed. And stop just sets all them pins to zero. Now just, just in case um, that hadn't worked. So I'm gonna make the robot go forward, stop, go backwards, left and then right. So let's give this a go and let's jump over to our overhead camera here and see uh, what we can see. So I'm going to run this and we will see the, the robot lurch forward. There we go. And then backwards and then it's going to turn left and then it's going to turn right. So that worked perfectly. Uh, now I do have a battery installed on this, but I don't think the battery is um, full power. I think I've left this one on for a while. So... Um, what I wanted to do, but I can't do because I kind of ran out of time before the show started, was to uh, switch over the serial so that we're actually using the Bluetooth device um, and connect to that from this Mac so that we can control it that way. So I'll, I'll maybe get that working for the midweek video if we have time during the week to do that. Um, but otherwise, you can see here, we're actually controlling a Smiles robot using Python on an Arduino. So mission accomplished, yay. <laughs> so... With that, uh, let's head over to um, some of the things people have been talking about on the chat. So let me have a look um, and see what people have been saying. Um, so, Fernando, you were saying a uh, perfect audio. Thank you for that. And uh, you also mentioned that I was jamming all over to the uh, to the music at the beginning. I like to mix up the music every now and again. I'll just go on to Epidemic Sounds and uh, check out um, some good songs that they have on there. Royalty free. So Ovi says nice, and then uh, he was asking that question about can you connect an ESP chip to an Arduino motor controller? So instead of that, what I would say is you can use, um, let's see if I've got one to hand. Yeah. So I've got a robot here, which is my Pico Smiles robot. And if I just zoom in a bit there, there's a little red board under there. I think it's the MX1506, I'm gonna say. Um, there's another one which is this is the really small 
Smiles Mini. That's got the exact same motorboard on it there as well. And the Pico is just like the, uh, the um, ESP32 or 8266, that's 3.3 volts. So whereas the voltages are coming out of this thing and going into the pins on the uh, Pico, you could essentially just replace that Pico with an ESP and it would work just the same with Python as well. No, no issues there. So you probably can use one of those and they are a lot cheaper than the, um, the driver boards that we use for, uh, for the Unos. So if I just grab, let's grab this one here. So for example, this is the official um, Arduino motor controller board. Oh no, it's not the official one. It's a, it's a, a knockoff copy. It says Deke Robot. So they can be about uh, between 15 and 30 pounds, I think, which is quite a lot. Um, and it's because there's, there's a lot going on there. Whereas these, these tiny ones, um, these cost like pounds. They're, they're maybe two or three pounds at the most. They're very, very cheap. Um, you probably don't get as much protection as you do on one of these. These have got lots of extra components on there to limit the voltages going through, whereas these will just let it go straight through to your device. So you kind of need to know what you're doing there, otherwise you might blow up something. Um, so we've got Alec Gamer. Hello. And watching from Belgium. Awesome. And Dow Robot is watching from Tampa, Florida. Awesome. So yeah, um, I'm going to say at our robot that uh, instead of using the um, MRL comms on your um, a a Mega for controlling your um, in-move robot, you could use the same board but use something like Pi Formata and Python, a Raspberry Pi, whether it's a Zero, Raspberry Pi 4 or whatever, you could use one of those instead and do a lot more complicated behaviours. So one of the things I'm really interested in um, is motor smoothing so if you've got a servo that's sort of moving an arm rather than it just being like a jerky movement on or off to a specific position you can get that to sort of ease into that position so it might go slow and then fast and then slow so it can do like an s curve of the speed so all that kind of code i've already got written in a python library so we can bring all that um, to our arduinos kind of at no cost just by using this Python Marta. So I'm quite interested in that. And a lot of my knowledge is being built up so that I can work on this um, in-move robot a lot more. You can just see his head um, just hiding here. So that's my um, in-move robot. And um, yeah, I was thinking instead of using the, um, I'll just grab him for a second. Instead of using this thing to control all the different servos, I was going to use um, this board instead, which is the PCA9685 board. Um, you can plug all the servos into that and then you've just got essentially two pins coming out. A lot easier to control that. And that means, um, you know, we, we can... It's just a, a different way, I guess. <laughs> so one of the questions there is, uh, can Pi Arduino pins be used as serial communication instead of serial pins? Absolutely, yep. Yeah. So almost every pin on a Pico, for example, can be used as a serial port. There's not many that you can't. Um, so multiple Arduinos can be used with one Pi. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. You could have multiple of them. Um, let me have a think how that would work. Because you probably, on, yeah, I think on an in-move, you typically have two megas, don't you, for the for the motor control. Um, that's certainly why I bought these two. I bought these back in the day, two identical ones. One of them's got a sticker on the back that says uh, MRLcom. So I think you can do that. Um, I would have to check and experiment with that. But yeah, I have no reason why that wouldn't work. So should be fine. It's more the, the Python device that's reading the two serial ports. Um, that can create, you can connect. I was actually thinking as an experiment, as a sort of demo program, we could have um, quite a few of these um, Arduino Smiles robots. I've got about eight of them, I think. Um, we could have all these with Bluetooth, all connected to the same Python code, and it basically just writes to all the different eight serial ports, the USB ports or Bluetooth ports simultaneously, and then they would all do the exact same movement. So that was one of the things I was thinking about doing as a, as a demo. I may well do that because uh, it should be pretty trivial to upload Pythomata to all these different robots. Um, and I think I have, yes, I've, I've got a, a box of motor driver boards just behind me there. Um, there's about 20 
motor driver boards so I could get them all working exactly the same with the exact same code. So that'd be a bit of fun. Cool. So that's everything I think I had for you today. Um, I don't think there was anything else I was going to cover off, actually. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. This was, um, sort of, for me, quite a quick video. I normally do them about an hour long, but on this one, uh, I thought we'd just keep it keep it nice and short for, for what this purpose is, which is Pi for Marta. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'll uh, post another video out at midweek. That will either be on um, wireless charging. I've got some um, wireless charging modules, um, which I'm going to try and get working I've even printed out um, a new Smiles robot base to attach this to the bottom of. Um, so that's one of the things I've got on my list of things to make videos about. And what else is it? Probably a follow-up one on this as well, just to actually show you it, it working. So if there's no more questions, no more other comments that people want to make. Um, oh, there's there's one more there from uh, Dow Robot, which is a uh, firmata can be upgraded to 32 bits instead of 8 bits. So it's a protocol, so it doesn't actually matter what you are running. Um, how do I answer this? The actual protocol is 8-bit, so that's not going to change. Uh, but if you've got multiple packets of data that need to be sent, it would just break them down into you know 7-bit words for the data and send them um, as a series. Um, and with the speed that it's communicating at, it, you know, it's fast enough that you, you wouldn't experience any lag whatsoever. So the fact that it's an uh, 8-bit code running on 8-bit processors is, is, is fine. You can get Fermata for all different devices. So ESP32s, um, pretty sure it runs on MicroPython devices as well. We saw that the Blue Fruit, that's a 32-bit that's a device. Um, it runs on that as well. Microbits I've not checked out, but I'm pretty sure it would run on them. Basically, any, any device that you want to communicate to over serial you can use Fermata to do that. So yes, um, shall I just go back to some of that code and have a, another look at that? I don't think we need to really. So yeah, if, instead of writing um, a digital pin, you can just write, if I just go back over there, instead of doing bot.digital, you could do bot.analog and you could read or write an analog value. So writing an analog value would help you um, control the speed, for example. Uh, reading an analog value could help if you were reading the distance, for example, on um, uh, well, if you're reading a potentiometer or something like that, I think the the distance sensors, so these um, distance sensors that we have on these robots, um, they they give a value back. So it's a digital value, it's just like a value between zero and one thousand twenty four, something like that. So yeah, we can read those values very simply um, into the Arduino and then send it over Python Mata that way. Cool. So it works in a very similar way that um, MRL comms does if you use that in my robot lab. Awesome. OK, so I'll uh, let you get back to your day and um, thank you for joining me on this one. I've enjoyed putting this one together and it was something that was on my to do list uh, to look at how does this actually work. And it turns out it's a pretty awesome protocol. So uh, I'll be definitely building that into my future projects as well, meaning that I can continue to build my knowledge of Python. Um, I can use my Arduino investments that I have already and uh, we can make some really cool behaviors with that. So thanks for joining me. I shall see you next time.